Everything in share valuation comes down to earnings. Is the company making a profit? Is it doing exceptionally well? Is it having a poor time? Not only that, is it doing well against its competitors? Should I be maybe long of an outperforming stock and certainly avoiding or even trying to short an underperforming stock? How can I work out which stocks are overperforming and underperforming and how can I measure it? The classic measure that people look at is the price earnings ratio. This is the relationship between the price of the share and the earnings per share. Earnings per share, as we discussed in brief a little moment ago, is the amount of money that the company generates as profits divided by the number of shares in issue. If you take then the earnings per share figure and look at that against the price of the share quoted on the market, you get some sort of idea of the price earnings ratio. Another way of thinking about the price earnings ratio is to say how many years worth of earnings would you need to make off that share to reflect the share price. So for example, if a share had a price earnings ratio of 10, you need 10 years worth of earnings. In other words, hold the stock for 10 years before you would recoup the price of actually owning the share. Now price earnings ratios are all very well, but of course there's a catch. The catch is that you're looking at past data. So what people try to do is look at brokers' forecasts for future earnings. This is why earnings are so important when looking at share valuations. What are the forecasts, again into the future, of what the earnings from the share are going to be? And from that number, if you believe that forecast to be true, you can back engineer to a so-called forward price earnings ratio. So here we're now saying we know the price of the stock today, we have this estimate of how well the company is going to do in the future in terms of shares, share earnings, and we can calculate a forward-looking PE. What this allows us to do is now to compare all the different stocks in the marketplace against one another. Which one has a high PE, which one has a low PE. The simple rule is if a share has a low price earnings ratio, it is at a very relatively inexpensive or undervalued level. Not always. It may be a sign that the company is just distributing large amounts of its income. Equally, if a share has a very high price earnings ratio, the market is putting a very rich or very favourable valuation on the share, hoping that in time earnings will increase in the future and that the price will justify uh, the future expectation about earnings. So we can look at a scale of price earnings ratios and get some sort of idea of whether or not shares look relatively cheap or relatively expensive. Now, you can't just look at a cheap share and say it will go up because it's cheap, and you can't just look at an expensive share and say it will go down. Remember, again, it's all about forward expectations. As a general guide, you will find that the market tends to look at certain levels of price earnings ratio as a way to judge the valuation of a share. Our second metric to look at the valuation of a company is to look at the net asset value of the share. This is pretty much what it says. You take the assets of the company and deduct all the liabilities. This includes any bank loan debt or any loan stock that needs to be repaid by the company. So effectively, it's the closing down valuation of the company. What is left when every liability has been paid off? With that figure, you then divide it by the number of shares in issue and you have the net asset value of the share, the NAV. Now, typically, shares don't precisely trade on their NAV. Remember what's driving a share price is supply and demand and also sentiment, not just NAV. Some shares may be out of favour. They may be in an unfashionable sector. Some stocks may be very hot. There may be a lack of supply and a lot of demand. And then you will find that those sorts of stocks are well above the NAV, where the unfashionable ones are well below. So NAV just gives us an anchoring point to see whether the market is very pessimistic about the company or is in fact maybe very overextended in terms of valuation. 
Some companies do not naturally lend themselves to a net asset value calculation. So-called people businesses, where people don't appear as assets on a balance sheet and are difficult to value, would not appear in the calculation. So you look at the creative industries or media like advertising, where a lot of the value of a company is in its people and not in its assets. NAV can be less valuable as a tool for valuation. You cannot make your trading strategy based just on selling the outperformers and buying the underperformers. Again, there's much more subtlety in what's going on, but NAV will help you to understand where the market puts its valuation on the current share price.